Good happy Wednesday morning, December 12, 2018. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, pedestrian in wheelchair dies after being struck by tractor trailer in Tilton, police say. Let's take a listen to the video from WNUR News 9, Kristen Carosa. We were born in New Hampshire in 1850 to help people through the challenges of life. Today, shortly after 2:30, 911 calls started to come in to the Tilton Police Department reporting an accident on East Main Street between Lowe's Drive and Morrison Avenue. The first officers on scene uh, found that it looked like a, a man on a wheelchair was down in the roadway. It looked like he had been hit. 70-year-old Francis Houghton, a decorated war veteran from Tilton, had been hit by an oncoming tractor trailer from Massachusetts. He died at a nearby hospital. Some of the witnesses said that they saw the uh, motorized wheelchair on the sidewalk and um, and then shortly after the accident, the motorized wheelchair was in the roadway. The police chief says Houghton was heading to see his family at a house directly across the street from where the fatal crash happened. Witnesses say they believe they saw him trying to cross at the time of the accident. Those things are still uh, part of the investigation, um, but we know at some point he was on the sidewalk. The driver of the tractor trailer was flagged down by witnesses and spoke with investigators. The chief says the driver is cooperating and had no idea he hit someone. It is unfortunate and, and uh, my heart goes out to the family. Um, it's a, um, a tragedy for everybody and for those who knew him and his family members. Uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to him. Now, police do tell us the investigation is ongoing, but the driver is not facing any charges at this time. We're live in Tilton. Kristen Carosa, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Driver killed in a single car crash in Dunbarton. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Don't miss this week's WMUR holiday specials, brought to you by Dartmouth Hitchcock, wishing you a happy and healthy holiday season. Go to breaking news right now from Dunbarton. Dunbarton Fire says one person was killed in a crash on Concord Stage Road tonight. Only one vehicle was involved, and the driver was the person killed. Police still at the scene right now investigating. Stick with WMUR and WMUR.com. We'll have the latest information posted as it all comes in. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Police investigate cause of child's significant injury in Chikora. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Tim Callery. Searching for answers, members of the State Police Major Crime Unit were stationed outside of this Chikora home after police were called here last night. At about uh, 8.20 in the evening, we received a report of a 
minor child who received a significant injury. Authorities are not releasing the child's name or elaborating on the extent of their injury. I can't get into releasing that information because it is a minor child, uh, but we are certainly hopeful uh, you know, for that child's well-being. Yellow police tape is wrapped around the Deer Hill Road home as detectives try to figure out what exactly happened. And as part of their investigation, they're turning to the public for some help. Yeah, if anyone has any information regarding the injury to the child or any history regarding uh, th this incident, we'd ask them to call the state police for, and ask for Detective uh, Sergeant Craig McGinley. Right now, there's no search for any possible suspects. State police say they believe they have everyone accounted for and people living nearby have nothing to worry about. We do not feel that the public has any need uh, to be alarmed. And now state police say they will release more information as their investigation develops. Live here in Tamworth, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Prosecutors, man who threatened Governor Chris Sununu, is danger to himself and others. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. this week's WMUR holiday specials brought to you by Dartmouth Hitchcock wishing you a happy and healthy holiday season prosecutors say that 38 year old Brian Roberts is a danger to himself and others Roberts is facing one count of criminal threatening after authorities say he used a CIA website to threaten Governor Chris Sununu where he writes, going to shoot God's state of New Hampshire no matter what, correct? Yes, sir. Prosecutors say this is one of several threatening messages they uncovered. Others reference the conquered Jewish community. The state trooper who arrested Roberts said he is homeless and claimed to be schizophrenic. He spoke a lot about believing that a Navy SEAL chip had been placed into him. Uh, he believed there was a GPS in him. The government was monitoring him. Uh, Overall paranoia about uh, you know, helicopters hovering over him. The state wants Roberts held without bail pending his trial, but would not oppose mental health treatment if it's available. His defense attorney wants him released so he can get the help he needs, adding that Roberts told police he never meant any of his alleged threats and authorities never found any weapons. They are not cogent. They're incoherent, difficult to read, disorganized thoughts of somebody who's mentally ill and suffering from schizophrenia. Rabbi Robin Nafshi says she hopes Roberts gets help, but is troubled by a recent wave of anti-Semitism locally and nationally. We are a strong community. We're a community with a lot of resolve, and uh, we'll get through this as well. Roberts also made a rambling statement today where he talked about mental illness and writing a history of the state of New Hampshire. The judge took the matter under advisement. Reporting live, I'm Andy Hirschberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. A C L U fights to get Kung Glorious Man being detained in New Hampshire out of jail. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Amy Cavino. He and his family have endured terrible conditions, including persecution, based on the ethnicity. Attorney Xiang Yap Kim says his client is from the Hutu tribe and that local militia are striving to drive all Hutu out of the Congo. 
and says Beyond Fate tried to get help from the Congolese government after he paid high ransom to get his son back in 2017. Instead, the same militia came again in 2018, went to his house and threatened to kill him and rape his wife, kill all of his children. In November, the former banker and teacher hid his family and fled. With a U.S. visa in hand, he was hoping to get to French-speaking Canada and ask for asylum. He did not know about the Safe Third Country Agreement, which would not allow a non-U.S. citizen to apply for asylum in Canada if they arrived in the United States first. The ACLU says their client was so naive, he asked for instructions from U.S. Border Patrol at the Derby Line Crossing in Vermont. He kind of thought that as an innocent person, coming to the United States, having a U.S. visa would allow him to go to the border. And then even he asked the U.S. border officer um, to show him the direction how to go to Canada legally. Beyond Fate was escorted back across the border, stripped of his U.S. visa, and turned over to ICE. Since November 21st, he's been at the Stratford County Detention Center, which is currently holding 72 immigrants. He has only one legal avenue to fight his case in the United States to be protected by the U.S. government. The next hurdle will be raising the money for bond, which lawyers suspect will be high because Bien Fate has no ties in the U.S. The New Hampshire Conference of the United Church of Christ has an immigrant support group that's trying to raise money for the bond, but say their funds are depleted. You can find their link on our website. Live in studio tonight, Amy Cavino, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Many in Hampstead residents still struggling with water issues. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. Lazy Boy at Cardi's Furniture. Lazy Boy's reclining sofas, love seats, and recliners are the gold standard of the industry. Take advantage of Cardi's no interest financing for up to 60 months. Lazy Boy recliners start at just $2.98. Cardi's Furniture. So this is our 300 gallon um, water tank. For Deanna Anthony's family, this giant tank hooked up to a pump and hose is the only way they can have running water in their Hampstead home. And now with going on six months, we're really at the point where we need to be prepared to make some really costly maneuvers. In July, their well ran dry. Much like many of their neighbors on Main Street, others have seen some water return, but not the Anthony's. They rely on almost weekly deliveries and conserve water any way they can. A gym membership was recently donated to them for showers. One solution would be if a private company stretched their water lines out to Main Street. But that's not seeming very realistic right now, or at least it's not going to happen anytime soon. The Anthony's know whatever happens next will be expensive, which is why they're selling their 1968 Chevy Nova to be prepared. We've come to the realization that water is a need in our home and the car is just a luxury. Joe Guthrie, a state rep and selectman, has been the liaison between the planning board and a committee formed by Anthony. Guthrie says they're working to put forth a warrant article to help solve some of the problems. It's too bad we're not able to help Deanna, but we hopefully we'll be able to help anybody who is doing any future building in the town or those who are in town already having the difficulty. Guthrie says he's hopeful a private water line could be stretched further into Hampstead by 2020. Live in studio, Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. UK Prime Minister to face no confidence vote as Bertex hangs in the balance.
British Prime Minister Theresa May will face a vote of no confidence from members of her own Conservative Party on Wednesday as the backlash against her leadership grows while she tries to salvage her vertex deal. Stormy Daniels ordered to pay Trump's legal fees. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. This holiday, get a year of Amazon Prime and an Amazon Echo on us. Already have Prime? We'll cover another year. All that when you switch to Fios Gigabit Connection, the fastest internet available, plus TV and phone for just $79.99 per month with a two-year price guarantee and a two-year agreement. 100% fiber optic network, 100% phenomenal. A California judge has ordered Stormy Daniels to pay President Trump $293,000 after her defamation case against him was dismissed. Last month, the judge dismissed her claim that one of the president's tweets defamed her, tonight ordering her to pay the president's legal fees. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And... That does it for the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.